Well, I'm super excited to announce that swim season is finally over in my house so my family can go back to eating dinner at the table together. And today I'm gonna share with you some of the recipes that I've made over the past week. Some are super quick and easy. Most, in fact, probably all of them are not that fancy, but I always like sharing these just to give you guys some real life dinner inspiration. So let's get started. So tonight for dinner, I did not really have a plan. And I looked in the fridge and I looked at all the stuff I had and here's what I'm putting together. So I have some broccoli, I washed that up. Probably just gonna steam this on the stove top. I've got some chicken breast here. This is just regular boneless, skinless chicken breast I put into a casserole dish. I'm gonna season this with some olive oil, salt and pepper, um, some lemon zest, lemon juice, probably a little bit of thyme because I have some in my fridge, some garlic, uh, I think that's it. And then I'm either gonna cook this on the stove top or in the air fryer, I'm not sure yet. I've got some veggies here. I'll probably cut up some more. I don't have any salmon, but I have uh, tzatziki sauce, so I might get some of that out. I have some of these little, like, non bread. My kids love these, so I'm kind of doing like a Greek inspired deal, uh, but I don't have any hummus. So that sucks and I don't really wanna make any, but I am gonna make this lemon basmati rice in the Instant Pot. So I'll show you that recipe. And then I think I'm gonna cook up this salmon also, just cause I wanna get it used up before I have to freeze it. The kids love that. Adam hates salmon, so he won't eat that, but then we'll have enough protein for everyone. So I thought about marinating my chicken earlier today, but I kind of just forgot slash didn't really have to, didn't really have time, so. That's fine, we're gonna, we're gonna do it like this. It'll be just fine. So I'm gonna put some lemon zest on here. Lemon zest is a great way to get a lot of flavor on your meat or your fish, especially if you're like me and you did not, or you, you know, neglected to marinate it. And then for the thyme, I just like pull the leaves off. I'm not really interested in chopping it up too much. All right, let's do some salt, pepper. I'm gonna squeeze some lemon juice. So as I'm sitting here looking at this chicken, I'm like, why don't I just bake it in this dish? Like, that would be the most <laughs> simple thing to do. So I think I'm just gonna do that, right? Why not? I was gonna heat up the pita bread in the oven anyway. So normally I just wrap it in a big piece of foil. And sometimes I don't like to bake chicken all that well, um, but if I put plenty of olive oil on it, it will brown up. You know how baked chicken is sometimes, but. So we got the other side. I'm gonna put some lemon zest. If you don't have a microplane grater, definitely get one, check it. I'll link mine down below on Amazon. They are fantastic for zesting citrus fruit when you're making recipes. Okay, olive oil, thyme, some of the stems in there. So rustic. Salt, I mean it smells good. Pepper. I'm gonna crush a few more cloves of garlic. Okay, so this is the lemon rice recipe that I use. Um, I'll link it down below. But I've got two tablespoons of butter in my Instant Pot and I'm gonna put in some rice. So this is two cups of basmati rice that I have rinsed and drained. And I'm just gonna saute this in the butter or you could also use olive oil for, I don't know, maybe about three to four minutes until it gets a little toasty. All right, so after the rice gets nice and toasty, then you can add your seasonings. So in here, I've actually got a teaspoon of chicken bouillon powder, uh, two teaspoons of dried basil, some salt, and some garlic powder. And I'm gonna stir that in. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of lemon juice, two cups of water. Okay, so I'm gonna cook this on high for six minutes. So I've got it on high pressure, uh, six minutes. And then once it finishes, I'm just gonna let it natural pressure release. So just let it sit until all of the pressure really, or well, until it depressurizes. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I've got my oven preheated to 425 degrees. I'm gonna 
put the chicken in and we'll probably cook that for about 12 to 15 minutes. Okay, so I've got my broccoli steaming in my pan here. I'm just gonna let that go for probably another five minutes. And then I season the salmon with some olive oil, salt, pepper, um, minced garlic, dill, and paprika. And I'm gonna put that in, in the air fryer. I'm just gonna use the fish button, 350 for eight minutes. And then this is my non bread or pita, non whatever. I'm gonna wrap this up in foil and just put it in the oven with the chicken to warm up. Okay, so the chicken is done. I did take it out of the pan and sliced it up and put it back in there with the juices. It turned out really good. I added some extra salt and pepper. Um, I used some of this Chef Chamois um, seasoned butter on the broccoli. This is what it looks like. Lemon herb butter. And I got that at Sam's. And then here's how the rice turned out. This rice always turns out super perfect. So, all right, I'm gonna get everything together and the pita or the I keep calling it pita the naan is probably almost done oh, that air fryer salmon turned out really good I also have the instant pot lemon rice that always turns out great and then the pita or I, I don't know why I keep calling it pita the naan <laughs> that I heated up in the oven that works great to do that too you can also heat it up in the toaster here I am throwing naan at everyone <laughs> We finally got to eat at the table now that swim is over. Yay. And then uh, here's the chicken that I sliced up. That turned out really good and tender. Highly recommend. And here's how I fixed mine. I had some salmon, rice, and broccoli. And I put my chicken in the non wrap with some tzatziki and feta. This was a delicious and healthy dinner. I want to take just a quick break to thank Sundance Now for sponsoring today's What's for Dinner video. If you're not familiar with Sundance Now, they are an ad free streaming service. And before you say, Jen, do you really need another streaming service? Yes. Yes, I do. And I'm about to tell you. <laughs> I'm about to tell you why. Uh, Sundance now has original dramas, thrillers, and true crime shows. They have a ton of variety and I've already found a bunch of shows to put on my wish list, but you can stream Sundance now on all of your favorite devices for as low as $4.99 a month. All you have to do is download the app or watch online and you can discover exclusive shows from around the world instantly. I have been personally watching the docu-series called Jonestown Terror in the Jungle. If you get Sundance Now just for this docu-series, I, I would highly recommend it. This story just fascinates me. If you guys don't know, I grew up in kind of a cultish uh, evangelical <laughs> church when I was a child. And so these types of documentaries and shows always fascinate me, but I highly recommend that documentary. Um, but if you're interested in something else, Sundance Now is loaded with thousands of hours of of binge worthy content and there's always something new to watch. They also have weekly releases and hundreds of exclusive shows from around the world that you won't find anywhere else. It's commercial free and available for just $4.99 a month. It's super easy to stream it on your app and you can also stream it via Apple and Android devices, Amazon Fire TV, Google Chromecast and Roku. Another show I wanted to point out is called A Discovery of Witches. Season three is out now. This is a Sunday now original that premiered on January 8th. There are seven episodes and the finale drops on February 19th. So very, very soon. This is a series that definitely has good reviews. So I will be checking that out next. But if you guys want to try out Sundance Now free for 30 days, you can go to SundanceNow.com and use promo code CHAPIN. That is going to give you a free trial for 30 days. So you can start streaming your next obsession. Try Sundance Now free for 30 days by going to sundancenow.com and use promo code CHAPIN. That's sundancenow.com and use promo code CHAPIN, C-H-A-P-I-N. Tonight we are making spaghetti. I'm using my cast iron skillet because I had my labs drawn not too long ago and my iron is low. So this is one of the ways that you can increase your iron. I'm going to deglaze with some red wine. Okay, so I added a jar of marinara sauce to this, and then uh, what I like to do is after I add the marinara sauce, I'll use a like some water just to like rinse the jar out and add that. It doesn't really water down your sauce. Plus, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to simmer this for as long as it takes to cook the bread and the pasta. And yes, my stove is 
greasy because I just fried hamburger. So anyway, I'm gonna put a lid over this or maybe just some foil and simmer it. The longer you can simmer it, the better it will be, the more tender it will be. And I normally don't use like red wine in my um, spaghetti sauce on a regular basis, but I have it and I wanted to deglaze the pan. So there you go. And yeah, I don't know how much iron you know the cast iron skillet really adds to your food all i know is that i am extremely deficient <laughs> on iron my, he my hemoglobin is like 10.2 or something like that so i need to like focus on my nutrition like for real and take care of myself a little bit better um so one of the things that's recommended is cooking especially like acidic food in a cast iron skillet like tomatoes because it helps absorb more of the iron in your food okay so my water is boiling i did add a little bit of salt to it i'm gonna add my spaghetti this is just regular old hy-vee spaghetti i ended up getting this um pasta on sale for like i don't know it was like 47 cents a box at hy-vee so end up being a pretty cheap meal actually actually let's figure out how much it was so this was 47 cent the sauce was 99 the ground beef was three dollars so three four four fifty just for this my garlic bread i got it at um dollar general because i'm super fancy like that how much was that let's see uh the garlic bread was 250 per box so that's actually more expensive, but I was over on that side of town. I didn't have a choice. Okay, let's stick this in the oven. All right, so my noodles are done. What I like to do is just toss them with a little bit of the sauce right in the pot after I drain them. And this just help them, helps them not stick together. I mean, people can use, can use oil too. I just find that using oil usually means that um, the sauce isn't gonna stick to your pasta quite as well because it's slippery. All right, so here's our spaghetti. I'm gonna add a couple of pieces of garlic toast to this and I'm gonna make the salad, but I'm running short on time right now, so I'm not gonna show that to you guys, but it's just gonna be iceberg lettuce, tomato, cucumber, croutons, and some Olive Garden dressing. And this is our uh, super non-fancy, super quick dinner. Okay, so tonight I'm gonna make some meatballs. So I got these meatballs on sale at Hy-Vee. So they're still frozen. I actually meant to put them in the crock pot earlier today and I just didn't have time and forgot. So I'm just gonna put these in a Dutch oven. I've got about a cup of water here. Um, I'm gonna turn this on and just simmer these for about 15 minutes. And then for the sauce, um, I'm gonna do barbecue sauce and a little bit of grape jelly. dinner it looked like i did not get a clip of it i just got a photo but it's nothing fancy so we just have our barbecue meatballs i let those simmer for probably about 20 to 30 minutes to make sure that they were nice and tender and then i made some egg noodles and buttered those and salted them and then just some simple mixed veggies with butter salt and pepper so obviously not a fancy dinner but you know you can't do fancy <laughs> You can't do fancy every night. Sometimes you just need meatballs and noodles. And actually we had leftovers of this. So Adam took some to work the next day. And I also made up some for Connor the following day and put them in a preheated thermos. And he took them to school and enjoyed some leftovers for lunch as well. All right, so I thought I would share with you guys real quick what I am having for lunch today. I got these shrimp from Aldi. I think they're one of like the seasonal items. They're the gluten-free boom boom shrimp with sweet Thai chili sauce. So I just have them on a like baking rack over a cookie sheet. That's how it says to make them. I'm sure you could also do them in the air fryer. And then this is the like sweet chili sauce that comes with them. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven. They bake for 20 minutes. I'm gonna also make a salad on the side. All right, let me show you something. Salad, this is what I'm gonna have. It is the uh, Josie's Organic Asian Salad. If you also feel like you need your salads, shaken up here's what you should do sometimes i will just put it in a like tupperware whatever container i i know i always say tupperware but that's not what i call it tupperware is anything plastic with a lid okay put the dressing in and then fold the top down and shake the bag this is a lot of salad but I might eat it. Okay, this is obscure. Do you guys remember in the 90s, McDonald's had those salad shakers? They were like a cup, like a 
clear plastic cup with a lid and they had like all the lettuce and chicken and eggs and carrots and whatever and then you poured the dressing in there put the lid on it almost looks like a frappuccino cup from starbucks but it doesn't have a hole in the top put the lid on shake it up you'd be you know driving in your car eating your salad out of a cup with your fork do you remember that <laughs> i don't know why i always think about those when i shake up a salad but um yeah there's your obscure McDonald's 1999 fact for today. All right, so here's my salad. I went ahead and put the shrimp on the top because I do what I want. And I already tried one with the sauce. They're delicious. If you find these at Aldi, I highly recommend them. You know, sometimes you never know when you get stuff from their freezer section, but these are really crispy and delicious. And I didn't have to deep fry them. I just baked them in the oven and then broiled them for a little bit. So I'm gonna eat these with the sauce, eat my salad, boom, quick lunch. All right, so tonight for dinner, I'm gonna make some pork chops and some cauliflower. Uh, I have my pork chops here. I took these out of the fridge maybe about 20 minutes ago and I'm just letting them sit on this plate with some salt and pepper and garlic powder to let them get a little bit of seasoning and I've made this cauliflower before. It's actually kind of a keto recipe. I've made it before on my channel, but it's been a long time. So in this bowl right here, I just melted in the microwave two tablespoons of butter. And I'm just gonna, I have one head of cauliflower that um, I just washed up this weekend and cut up. So it was ready to go for me. That is one thing you can do on the weekends to make your life easier. <laughs> when it's time for dinner. But I'm just gonna cut this into bite-sized pieces and mix it in the butter. Um, and then we'll kind of toss it with like some salt and pepper and roast it in the oven for about 15 minutes prior to adding like the cheese and the bacon to it. Um, Cause cauliflower does take a while to cook. So you wanna pre-cook it so it's not crunchy cause nobody wants crunchy cauliflower. Okay, so I'm gonna season this with some salt and pepper. And then I'm just gonna toss this with the butter until everything is coated. Okay, so I've got a small, smallish, I guess, baking dish here. Uh, you don't need a, a nine by 13. It's not quite that much food, but I'm just gonna kind of put this into a single layer. And then I'm preheating my oven to, I think, 450. I'm gonna pop this in there for uh, about 15, 20 minutes. In this same bowl, while the cauliflower is cooking, I'm gonna add, uh, I'll just add this whole thing, probably about two thirds of a cup of sour cream and it calls for a heavy cream, a quarter of a cup, but I don't have any heavy cream and so I'm just gonna use half and half. It'll work just fine. If you have milk, use that too. All right, so to this, I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of green onion and then about a cup of shredded cheddar. I have some pre-shredded here, so I'm gonna use that. And then I've got three cloves of garlic. These are small cloves. The recipe calls for two. Um, by the way, I'll link this recipe in the pork chop recipe down below, but this particular bulb of garlic that I have was rather <laughs> small. So I used three small cloves instead of two regular sized cloves. Okay, so I'm gonna mix this all together and then once the cauliflower is done uh, doing its par bake, we'll put this on top of the uh, veggies and sprinkle it with a little bit of extra cheese and some bacon bits and pop it back in the oven. Okay, so for the pork chops, I've got some butter in my skillet here. Just about three tablespoons I'm gonna add these and just saute them on either side until they get golden brown. All right, so I removed the pork chops and I'm gonna add a little bit of flour to the drippings. Now, the recipe doesn't actually call for this because again, I think this is a keto recipe, maybe, sort of. I don't know, it's been a long time since I've made this. But I wanna make sure that the sauce is thickened and I wanna, simmer these pork chops in there for a little bit so they get tender. So where's my chicken breast? Chicken breast, chicken broth. I'm gonna put this in. And then the recipe calls for heavy cream. Again, I don't have any, so I'm gonna add some half and half. It's kind of like a milk gravy. I don't know, this is called, I think it's called velvet pork chops is the name of the recipe. Okay, so I'm gonna stir this up, taste it, add salt and pepper if I need to. Put the pork chops, which I have right here, back in. Put the lid on and simmer it over 
like low, medium low heat for about 20 minutes. Here's my cauliflower. I removed it from the oven and topped it with the sour cream mixture. I'm gonna sprinkle the rest of the cheese on top. There's not, there's actually not very much left. I actually don't think I had quite the amount of cheese that the recipe actually called for, but that's fine. And then lastly, I'm gonna put some bacon bits over the top. You could use fresh cooked bacon if you want, but it's a Monday night and I know we got time for that right now. Okay, I'm gonna put this back in the oven uh, probably about 20 minutes. Let's see how long it takes to cook through. Okay, so here's the cauliflower. I tested it with a fork and it's tender. So I just sprinkled the rest of the green onions on top and then I've got my pork chops in here. Hopefully they're, whoo, that's hot. Hopefully they're nice and tender now, so I'm gonna make a plate and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I didn't come to YouTube to cook gourmet food, but this is pretty darn good. As you can see, I can cut the pork chop with my fork, which is what I wanted, because sometimes when I cook pork chops, they are just a little bit tough. Um, but these are really good. I simmered it on low for probably about 20 to 30 minutes, and cauliflower is good too, so does not win the prettiest dish, <laughs> but it's good and this is gonna be my dinner tonight. Actually might make some rice to go with the pork chops for Adam and the kids because there's like a lot of, gra <laughs> of gravy in there. I feel like it would be good over rice. So I'll probably do that for them. I have some um, in the pantry that I can just microwave and that'll be super quick. All right, well that is gonna wrap it up for today's video. Thanks you guys so much for coming along with me today. Don't forget to check out Sundance Now, especially for that Jonestown docuseries. Highly recommend it. I'll have that link in the description box below. Thanks again for being here and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.